Hello, my dear students. Uh, now let us discuss about infiltration. Infiltration is defined as the downward movement of water from soil surface into the soil mass through the pores of soil. So you can see here uh, the precipitation. After precipitation, if it is a less uh, infiltration in the non-porous soils and rock, then here you can see this is uh, because of the non-porous soils and rock there will be less infiltration but more infiltration in case of porous soil. You can see here more infiltration. Infiltration uh, is nothing but the entry of water into the soil through the soil surface. Percolation is the process of downward movement of water into the soil once water enters into the soil. Okay, see the difference. The uh, infiltration is the entry of water into the soil through the soil surface. Percolation is the process of downward movement of water into the soil. When percolation stops, infiltration also stop when infiltration stop percolation is continued so this you should know okay when the percolation stop infiltration also stop but when the infiltration stop percolation is continued infiltration capacity is nothing but the maximum rate at which soil can absorb the water that is infiltration capacity uh, field capacity is the volume of water that the ground or a soil can hold that is known as field capacity. In capacity, uh, the maximum rate at which water can enter into uh, soil in a given condition is the infiltration capacity F and um, uh, here F is infiltration capacity, F A is actual rate of infiltration, I is intensity of rainfall. So actual rate of infiltration F A that is equal to infiltration capacity F when I is greater than F means intensity of rainfall is greater than the infiltration capacity then uh, it, it is equal to actual rate of infiltration. Similarly, actual rate of infiltration is equal to intensity of rainfall when I is less than F. Okay, so you should know this uh, infiltration capacity. Actual rate of infiltration is equal to infiltration capacity when rainfall is greater than or equal to filtration, uh, infiltration capacity. But when actual rate of infiltration is equal to intensity of rainfall when I is less than or equal to uh, F. I is less than F. Infiltration capacity curve. Infiltration occurs only after the interception and depression storage losses have been satisfied. Infiltration is high at the beginning of a storm when the soil is dry. It increases as the soil becomes saturated and ultimately approached a limiting constant value Fc. The capacity of any soil to absorb water from a rain falling continuously at an excessive rate goes on decreasing with time until a minimum rate to infiltrate is reached. Okay, you can see this is the infiltration capacity curve. Okay, and at any instant the infiltration capacity F0 of a soil is the maximum rate at which water will enter the soil in a given condition. The infiltration rate at any instant is the rate at which water actually enters the soil during a storm and is equal to infiltration capacity F0 or the rainfall rate whichever it is less. This is the graph time versus intensity infiltration capacity this is the curve okay at the beginning uh, the infiltration is uh, more and uh, then it decreases with the time there are uh, some effects of this infiltration that is um, it reduces the magnitude of the flood it delays the time of arrival of water to the channel it uh, recharges the groundwater reserv reservoir, it reduces soil erosion, it fills the soil pores to its field capacity, thus making water available to plants, it sustains green vegetation cover on the ground surface and thus helps in reducing um, 
the uh, storms there are some factors which affects the uh, infiltration that is vegetation cover moisture content and temperature intensity of rainfall human activity and um, quality of water movement of man and animals presence of ground water table size and characteristic of soil particles let us discuss one by one the first one is vegetation cover if the area is covered by ground grass vegetation and bushy plants infiltration capacity will be more on the other hand if the soil surface is bare the impact of raindrops falling on the surface will cause in washing of finer particles of the soil and will clog the surface thus resulting in the retardation of infiltration second one is moisture content that is if the uh, infiltration i mean infiltration rate depends on initial moisture condition of the soil when the uh, soil moisture is high infiltration rate is low but uh, soil moisture is low infiltration rate is high next is temperature the uh, viscosity of water changes with temperature increase in temperature causes reduction in viscosity so infiltration is higher when the temperature is high intensity of rainfall high intensity rainfall cause mechanical compaction of soil so heavy intensity rainfall cause less infiltration lesser intensity rainfall cause higher infiltration then uh, next is human activity cultivation on bare land will increase infiltration construction of roads and buildings will decrease in infiltration capacity quality of water uh, that is uh, <clears throat> silt and other impurities in water resulting in reduction of uh, uh, infiltration movement of man and animals heavy movements cause compaction of soil results in less infiltration presence of groundwater table if groundwater table is near to the earth surface it reduces infiltration for infiltration to continue groundwater table should not very close then size and characteristics of soil particles infiltration is directly proportional to the grain size or diameter for granular soils however if the soil has swelling minerals like elite and one modernite the infiltration rate will reduce drastically then we will see what are the measurement methods of infiltration rate the field measurement of the infiltration is done by the instrument instruments known as infiltrometers mainly there are two types of infiltrometers that first one is single tube infiltrometer or single ring type second one is double tube infiltrometer or double type let us see for single ring infiltrometer it consists of a hollow metal cylinder of 30 cm diameter and uh, uh, 60 cm length with both ends open the cylinder is driven in the ground such that 10 cm of it projects above the ground okay so here um, uh, above the ground the cylinder is filled with water such that a head of uh, 7 cm within the infiltrometer is maintained above the ground level due to infiltration of water the water level in the cylinder will go on decreasing water is added to the cylinder Uh, water is added to the cylinder through graduated jar or puree so as to maintain constant level the volume of water added over a predetermined um, time interval gives the infiltration rate for that time interval the observations are continued till almost uniform infiltration rate is obtained which may take about 3 to 6 hours depending upon the type of soil 
a plot of time in axis against rate of water added in millimeter per hour gives the infiltration capacity curve for the area. The major drawback of the single tube infiltrometer is that infiltrated water percolates laterally at the bottom of the ring. Uh, hence, uh, it doesn't truly represent the area through which infiltration takes place. Second one is the double ring infiltrometer. Here, um, uh, the above defect of lateral percolation of water is rectified in the double uh, tube infiltrometer, which consists of two concentric hollow rings. Okay. Um, or uh, cylinders driven into the soil uniformly without any tilt and disturb, uh, disturbing the soil to the least depth of around 15 centimeter. The diameter of the rings may vary from 25 to 60 centimeter. The water is applied in both the inner and outer rings to maintain a constant depth of about 5 cm. Water is replenished after the level falls by about 1 cm. The water depth in the inner and outer rings should be kept the same during the observation period. However, the measurement includes the recording of volume of water added into the inner compartment to maintain the constant water level and the corresponding elapsed time. As the purpose of the outer ring is to uh, suppress the lateral percolation of water from the inner ring, the water added to it need not to be measured through water is added to it to maintain the same depth as the inner ring. Here observations are continued till constant infiltration rate is observed. So you can see here this is the uh, double ring infiltrometer method. The water in both the rings should be kept the same during the observation period here. Measurement is taken only uh, from the inner tube. You can see the difference. This is single ring and this is the double ring. Okay. Then uh, we will see what are the infiltration indices. Infiltration capacity of soil does not remain constant. In hydrological computations for computing surface runoff and flood discharge, the use of infiltration capacity curve is not convenient. It is more convenient to use an average constant value of infiltration rate. This is the infiltration curve. Okay, here you can see infiltration curve. This is infiltration capacity curve, constant infiltration rate. This is the horizontal line and this graph is infiltration rate versus time. The average constant rate of infiltration is uh, known as the infiltration indices. Okay, the average constant rate of infiltration that is called infiltration indices. There are two types of infiltration indices. The first one is phi index, second one is W index. We will see what is phi index. It is the average rate of rainfall above which the rainfall volume is equal to the surface runoff volume. Okay, it is the average rate of rainfall and above which the rainfall volume is equal to surface runoff volume. That is given by phi is equal to P minus R divided by Te. Here uh, phi index centimeter per hour, P is total rainfall in centimeter, R is runoff in centimeter and T is time period for rainfall excess in centimeter. For uh, the determination of phi index, a horizontal line is drawn on the hydrograph such that the shaded area above that line is equal to the volume of surface runoff. You can see here, this is the horizontal line. The area, this shaded area above the line is equal to the volume of surface runoff. The unshaded area below the horizontal line actually represents all losses including interception, depression storage and infiltration, uh, depression storage and infiltration but it is assumed that all these losses are due to infiltration only. The, uh, this you should know the amount of rainfall in excess a phi index is called rainfall excess. This is about phi index. Let's see uh, what are the applications of phi index. It can be used to estimate surface runoff from a given hydrograph. It is specially useful for predicting the infiltration from a storm occurring over a very large basin. 
It is also useful for the unit hydrograph analysis to determine the pattern of rainfall excess. Then W index. W index is the average rate of infiltration during the period when the rainfall intensity exceeds the infiltration rate. It is given by this equation. W index is more accurate than phi index because interception and depression losses.